He said, oh, let me show you something. He went inside his shirt, pulled out a little envelope, right? So what's you showing me? Open the envelope. Toys for myself. It's interesting about me, personally, I came up in the juvenile system. For those that don't know, I first got locked up when I was 11 years old. Spent five years in the juvenile system when spending 20 years in prison. What I seen on When They See Us is something that I seen happen when I was certified as an adult. 17, I got certified as an adult, two armed robberies, two firearm charges. I got sentenced to 19 and a half to 52 years. So just for the people, before you go any further, you did 20 years. You came home in 2017. Yes. Just, I'm going to let you get right to your story. When did you get off parole? October 29, 2048. 2048. Yeah. Okay. So so what happened is this. This is what happened. Everything that happened to them with them getting railroaded, with them not properly, properly, a lot of them didn't even get read the Miranda rights. That was never even read. They was These kids didn't even know what Miranda rights was. How many kids was. was it? It was five kids. And what Central happened? Park. Can you tell me the story? Well, a woman got raped. These kids was in the park, and they just started picking up kids. That You know, they felt that was in the park. Someone wasn't even in the park. They picked them up. Oh, we got to get them. You have an overzealous district attorney that's building their rep up because that's what happened a lot of times. A lot of times these district attorneys, they chasing convictions because what the convictions is, once they build their rep off with a lot of convictions, they get they get the rep, they get all the connects in the district attorney's office, and they go into private practice, defense attorneys, and they big time now. A lot of times they be big time. You're like, damn, I want them to represent me because they got all the connects and they ain't no joke. They highly respect it. So, so they, build, they, they, will, they will mess your life up just to get a conviction, even if it's inconsistencies within the evidence, inconsistencies within the statements. This is what's going on in the crown across the country in America. Inconsistencies. And it's like you there, you don't have a proper representation because you live in the ghetto. And a lot of times people don't have the finances. That's why I tell people, cost too much to be a criminal. Remember where you're at. This shit ain't, it ain't no joke. You get So now you get in there, you can't pay the bill. The bill is too high. They know your mom ain't got it. A lot of times they can't even mortgage the house because someone was on Section 8. They don't have a house. And it, it's just crazy. So now you in jail, waiting trial. Mm-hmm. You exposed, especially as a young a kid. These, these guys was kids. So so much pressure coming their way. They try to offer them a deal. Usually they always come with a deal. And a lot of dudes break and they take the deal because they just they just want to get it over. I want to go home. I want to be. And they don't even know what they're setting up for. Yeah, they and, 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 and mention, bro, that they interrogated these kids for like 40 something hours no food no food no nothing parents no, was, nothing. no guardians no legal guardian you can't nothing do. parents some of the parents were scared and one of the fathers convinced his son to say that he did the crime so, sold his son out just because they threatened him with taking his job because he was in the joint before now what's so crazy about this is this what sad me about this whole experience that I witnessed guys that wasn't a part of the criminal and the street element element they might get caught at one time, or one of their friends might do something. Because a lot, I've been in jail with a lot of times where it'd be four or five dudes, one homicide or one major crime, and they all on the same case. And they got, they got them telling on each other because they ain't exposed. They're not regular street people. They're not, they're not a part of the, 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 the rules and regulations of the United States of America street code manual because they don't know nothing about that, and they're regular mm-hmm. civilians, but they're regular kids, and they might do some dangerous shit one day, right. not knowing what they've done. And next thing you know, I'm in the jail with them, and I'm seeing them. like They're going... They breaking down, but what was so sad about it when I seen them breaking down is that I was so programmed institutionalized because they was normal human beings and I was detached from the reality of normalness due to the fact that I was programmed by the system to be in jail and taking it like it was just cool and dealing with it like it was just cool. That's my that's the programming I had. So when I see them and they breaking down, they going through stuff like my man Wise that was in there. He was going through stuff and it, it was so it was so Crazy that as I seen him going through stuff, I seen many people go through that in prison. Whereas though they just they just resistant to that, they don't they not going for it. They always like this ain't normal. Ah, and then you'll see dudes like me and some of my associates that grew up in a criminal element that we normalize pain, we normalize this whole struggle of prison because it was a part of the lifestyle we chose that was normal. Where we really went crazy. But I'm in there thinking I'm going insane in order to stay sane because I'm like everything I'm see this is real. So when I go ready to go home, I could go back. I could reprogram myself. I got to deprogram myself first to reprogram myself to be able to go out to society because now I'm dealing with real life. But I was in jail looking at this shit like this real life. But when you see a dude like Corey Wise that was going through what he was going through, it was crazy because this dude never did nothing. He didn't do nothing. He wasn't at the party. He just went to go go to the court. I mean, go to the uh, the police district to support his friend. He's like, if I don't go with your mom, gonna kill me. 
And his life got traumatized. He got beat. All type of stuff happened to him in prison. He in there going crazy, hallucinating all this stuff because this is the effect of a person that's not no criminal. And even if you're a criminal, jail is not normal. But sometimes we've been told in the ghetto that jail is normal, jail is cool, that when you get there, you convince yourself that that shit is cool. Mm. And that's some crazy shit. Like, think about it. You slept, you, for years and years, I slept inside of a, a bathroom with another man. You sleeping inside a bathroom with another man. For years and years and years, and it's normal. You're going to, you in your cell, you, you living in a cell. All that stuff is normal. You're going out of the shower room, there's 50 people in the shower. Like, that stuff's not normal. But I was able to normalize, and that's what made me, that it, it, it throw you off. So when I seen this, I'm like, whoa. I seen it, these DAs that I know. I see how they be in that courtroom. I, I knew the whole process they was going mm -hmm. through. I seen dudes that was good kids that came in there that got statements coerced out of them. Mm -hmm. And I, a, a curse. So it was like, seeing that shit, I was like, damn, I seen the front row seat of this. I seen COs that was, you, you, you saying to yourself, damn, this CO from the hood. This CO lived two, two, two neighborhoods away from me. But they going above and beyond the code of duty, and they just going somewhere else to impress the white COs that they down and they not with us. So they doing all types of crazy shit to you. Mm -hmm. Coming in your cell when you ain't there, taking your property, putting you through this, strip searching you, all, all this over extra stuff to prove to, them, to the system and they think, I'm with y'all, I'm not with them, I'm not one of them. And it's not about me. You Listen, your punishment is your sentence in jail. Mm -hmm. But I'm punished by my sentence to jail, but I'm not, you're not supposed to be in here punishing me. This is my punishment to be taken away from society. But all that extra shit, all that you macing me, all that you, you know, you, you, you know, when you go to the hole, you got, they be having dog leashes on you. You'll have, you, you'll have a belt around you. You'll have the shackles on your mm -hmm. hand. I mean, the, the cuffs. And then sometimes they have a leash behind your back walking you to the, to the yard, out of your cell when you're in the hole. So they might have like four or five people walking. They got two leashes. There's two dudes over here, two dudes over there. And they walking. Got the what's names on their on they wrist, the cuffs on their wrist with the belt around them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll take you to a dog cage. Like the, that's your 20, when you're in a hole, 23 and 1. That's your hour out, dog. And you go right into a dog cage outside. And it's like a cage, two men cage. You in there like a dog, like a dog kettle. Right. So it's like the treatment is just on a whole nother level. Right. Me, I'm not, I did what I did. I ain't, I ain't, uh, you know, I wasn't one of them. I wasn't innocent. I was out here committing crimes. Do I think my sentence was just? No. Do I think, you know, uh, the procedure of, of sentencing me, the procedure of my travel, do I think everything was cool? Was it just? No. Mm -hmm. You got to have a lot of money, man. You need a lot of money to get the, the most powerful representation, man. And let me tell you all the youngins out there, you got to understand this. When you get locked up, the DA has one job, to get your ass found guilty. If the DA... Could see the paperwork. No, it's not right. No, uh, this story ain't adding up. But you ain't got a mouthpiece to articulate that this story ain't adding up. You're going to jail. You know why? Because the DA ain't trying to lose. This is a business. She's trying to get as many people locked up as possible. Because you full of jails up. That make you money. It's making somebody some money somewhere. And, you, and, and the funny thing about the money part, do you know I never bought my I never bought myself or my mom a house? Do you know how many houses I bought? Do you know how many people got houses off of me being incarcerated, out of the homies being incarcerated? Do you know how many people bought houses? I had this one guard, right? Me and him used to go back and forth. Because I used to put put my paperwork in. I knew how to I knew the codes of ethics that they posed to follow. They're not supposed to curse you know. They got a codes of ethics that they posed to follow. I was, so me and this dude used to go back and forth. Just down through it. Like, yeah, whatever. So one day, I'm coming out the yard. This is one of the most painful inter, you know, interactions I've ever had with a guard. So he said, oh, yeah, Peoples, you got some mail. So I, go, I'm coming, I came to the yard, come from the yard, go to my cell, coming back up to the desk. He said, hold up, hold up, look. He, he went inside of his shirt, and they wear like these vests. These like for like knives if somebody stabbed mm -hmm. him. Not like vests on it, but it's like a vest. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, let me show you something. He went inside his shirt. Pulled out a little envelope, right? So what's he showing me? Opened the envelope, took a picture. I said, look, check this out, peoples. I said, what? He put it on the desk. He said, you and the homies got that for me. I said, what? It's him in front of his house with a boat and then like in the driveway in the, in the house with him and his son. He said, y'all bought all that for me. That was the most painful shit I ever, I ever experienced. Mm -hmm. 
Uh-huh. Because the reality of the truth that we did. Country hemorrhoids. <laughs>